Next week, I wanted to share some diabetic-friendly meals you can make from Dollar Tree. I know that a lot of budget-friendly meals rely heavily on bread, pasta, and potatoes, and my recipes are no exception to that. But I also wanted to share some affordable meals for those who have to restrict or watch their carb intake. Now, of course, I am not diabetic, nor am I a dietitian, but I am basing these meals off of other similar diabetic recipe resources, as well as the guidelines set by the CDC. I'd also like to point out that I'm only counting carbs, so it's not necessarily inclusive of people who also have to restrict things like their sodium intake. Sodium is always a big challenge when it comes to shopping at dollar stores, but not everyone has a choice in where they shop. So my goal is always to provide accessible resources, ideas, and inspiration to anyone regardless of their situation. So with that being said, let's hop into our diabetic-friendly Dollar Tree meals. For breakfast, these three ingredient breakfast cups are perfect with only one carb each and they're so easy to put together they can even be made ahead of time and frozen. All you need to make these are eggs, deli meat, I'm using ham but any deli meat will work, and shredded cheese. Start by greasing a muffin tin. As you can see, I did not grease mine and I regret that. The ham will prevent most of the sticking, but if some of the egg leaks out, then it makes the muffin tin very difficult to clean and I swear there is nothing harder to wash than a muffin tin. But just press each slice of your deli ham into your muffin tin to form the little cups. As far as the eggs go, I like to just go ahead and crack my eggs directly into the ham cups. You can also scramble them in advance and that's a perfect time to add any vegetables that you have in your fridge, freezer, or pantry. I was thinking as far as Dollar Tree goes, a couple of really good options would be their little jar of asparagus or some of their frozen broccoli, um, frozen spinach, mushrooms, anything you would like in a frittata. You could even substitute the cheddar for feta cheese. There are so many possibilities. You can totally go ham. Haha, ha. see what I did there? I like to think I'm funny. So thank you guys for sticking along with me. I know I'm not the most entertaining YouTuber out there. So I do appreciate all of you guys for tuning into my videos. Get creative with it. The possibilities are endless. You could essentially have a different breakfast every week by just adding different vegetables, swapping out the deli meat, swapping out the cheese. Make it your own, totally. I did season these with some black pepper. I didn't add any salt to these because I felt like it's already got ham in it that's got enough salt. Plus I topped these with some shredded cheddar cheese which also adds some saltiness to it. Of course, feel free to season these to your liking. These then get baked at 400 degrees. If you want more of a runny egg, I would suggest 10 to 12 minutes, but if you want more of a set egg, then 15 minutes. I did for 15 minutes. These unmold fairly easy by just running a spoon along the edges and then I like to top mine with some hot sauce or some ketchup. You can use whatever condiment of choice you enjoy. I found this Louisiana hot sauce at Dollar Tree and it's actually really good. It's pretty on par with Texas Pete. And I actually do make these all the time regardless of them being low carb. I actually really enjoy them. I like that I can just stick a couple in the microwave and have an easy breakfast. The second recipe I made was one that was totally new to me. This is a broccoli cauliflower alfredo chicken bake thing. Yeah, that's what we should call it. It's actually called a chicken alfredo cauliflower rice bake. I did not look that up real quick. This one has about 21 grams of carbs per serving, a little under 6 grams of fiber per serving, assuming that it serves 4 people. For this, I used a bag of cauliflower rice, a bag of broccoli that had been thawed, I have a can of Alfredo sauce, two cans of chicken, some shredded mozzarella cheese, and some of these vegetable crackers just for a crunchy topping. I started with the broccoli. For me, this is kind of assessing the damage because Dollar Tree frozen vegetables are not the best. Sometimes I get people that think I am paid by or associated with Dollar Tree. I am neither. And if I could plead them to do anything, it would be to change their manufacturer for their frozen vegetables because for the $1.25 price, they are not a good quality. You can usually get a lot higher quality vegetables elsewhere for the same price, if not cheaper. Honestly, this bag wasn't terrible. I had a couple of these big florette pieces and then the rest were stem pieces. I do have to kind of cut away some of the more woody bits of the broccoli that I consider to be hard to chew. Um, so that's essentially what I'm going through and doing here is just chopping down into smaller pieces and assessing if my knife doesn't go through it very easily, I know my teeth won't. After I had prepped the broccoli, the rest of this is totally dump and bake. I have a casserole dish here. I went with my broccoli. My cauliflower rice is thawed and to get out as much of the moisture as I could, I did wring it out using a dish towel. I guess I should specify a clean dish towel. Into this goes my two cans of chicken that were also well drained, my can of Alfredo sauce, and once I had mixed this all together, I topped it with my shredded mozzarella cheese. 
I decided at the last minute to add some grated Parmesan cheese and then I crushed up some of my vegetable crackers right over the top. This goes into the oven to bake 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes or so. I did keep an eye on the crackers and once they started to get brown, I tented the top of it with some aluminum foil so it didn't brown further. This is very similar to a meal I used to make back when I was struggling financially, so I'm very familiar with all of the flavors that are going on here. Using cauliflower rice was a bit of a change for me, but I actually pleasantly enjoyed it in this dish. I think it worked really well and I'm not even low carb and I enjoyed this, so I definitely think it's a good recipe to try. Recipe number three is tried and tested for me. This is my spicy sausage and lentil soup, and honestly, it is one of the only ways that I enjoy eating lentils. This one comes in at 47 grams of carbs per serving and 21 grams of fiber, so it is a fantastic option, and lentils are considered one of the healthiest diabetic foods. For this one, you'll need a pound of sausage, one pound of dry lentils, some frozen seasoning blend. You can use broth or bouillon. I recommend bouillon because we need so much of it. And you can use vegetable, chicken, or a combination of both. I'm also using a can of tomatoes. And then as far as seasonings go, I have some Italian seasoning and some red pepper flake. In a large pot, or in my case, in a Dutch oven, I am going to start by browning up my sausage. This is Dolly. She is my soup pot, and she is nicknamed Dolly for Dollar Tree. Now, while you are browning the sausage, that is the opportunity to add in your red pepper flake. If you don't like spicy, leave this out. Your soup will still turn out fantastic, but if you do like that spicy heat, this is the time to add it in so it has time to activate with the fat from the sausage and the heat. Once my sausage was well browned, I added in my bag of seasoning blend, my rinsed lentils, my can of tomatoes, these were undrained, nine cups of water, two tablespoons of bouillon, I'm using the vegetable bouillon, and two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. Give this all a good stir, then bring it up to a boil, cover and simmer it for one hour, and I promise you your lentils will not be crunchy. That is one of my big problems with lentils is I feel like nobody ever puts enough water or enough cook time. They really need a lot of water and a long cook time to get nice and tender. This recipe makes a lot. It makes six bowls total, and if you have enough carbs in your day, you can definitely add some whole wheat bread on the side. I feel like soup and bread are like the perfect pairing. And yes, I know soup is more of a winter food, but for me, soup is a year-round food. I actually really love this soup, and this is about the third time I have made it. I do crave this soup. I always burn my tongue on the first bite, too. Let's move on to some fun treats like this diabetic-friendly Starbucks pink drink. This has three grams of carbs per cup. For this, you will need these zero sugar strawberry single serve drink mix packets and some canned coconut milk. Into a pitcher, I added six cups of cold water along with four of my strawberry drink mix packets. Whisk this well to combine and then stir in your can of coconut milk. Sometimes I do refrigerate my coconut milk in advance, but other than that, this drink is done. Add a Starbucks worthy amount of ice into a drinking glass and pour over your pink drink. This is a super refreshing summery drink. Perfect for those times when you just want a sweet treat. Even my boyfriend who doesn't like diet or sugar-free things enjoys this pink drink as well. It's also caffeine-free. Another way I like to use these drink mix packets, which I have a lot of them, I love them so much. They have between two to three grams of carbs per packet, and I like to mix them into teas. You can do black tea or green tea. Just whip up a batch of your favorite tea, and my personal favorite combination is to mix the black tea with either the lemonade packet or the pineapple packet. I really wanted to share some kind of a diabetic friendly dessert, but my particular Dollar Tree that I shop at does not have a lot of sugar free options. So the best I could come up with was some frozen berries or some canned fruit, depending on your carb allowances, and then top that with some Cool Whip. Uh, these strawberries had 19 grams of carbs per cup, and then the Cool Whip has two grams of carbs per two tablespoons. So that's a nice treat, but if you guys are diabetic and you do any sort of sweets or snacks from Dollar Tree, of course, give me ideas down below. I just couldn't find anything at my particular store. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. I know some of you are not a fan of the voiceover content. Trust me, it is not going to be the norm. It just ended up working out a little bit better for me this week. However, what I am thinking about doing is for those of you who like long format videos, I will be uploading those. And then I will also be uploading some short format videos 
for those who want the more efficient kind of voiceover style where I'm just talking about it versus the kind of experimental side where I'm going through the process of actually creating the recipes. But I do hope these diabetic friendly meals were helpful to those who need it. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you again soon.